Hey guys, Taryn here, Taryn Thompson from Christchurch in New Zealand, and thanks for joining me live tonight on my second um, Facebook Live, and tonight we're going to be talking about um, just how frustrating it can be when you're on a mission to smash your health goals, but the scales aren't moving, and it can be incredibly frustrating, I know, but if you know why and you know what to do, it can make it a heck of a lot easier to stay motivated. I know that motivation has got to be the thing or at least one of the main things that will keep you on track. Um, I mean results, sorry, I got, has got to be one of the main things that will keep you on track. So if you're getting results and you're moving forward, then you're far more likely to stay motivated. And so if the scales are not showing you what you want to see, then it's there can be three things which I'm going to talk about tonight that can really help you. Um, so thanks for joining me tonight. Hey, Victoria. Hey, <laughs> hey, Christine. Good to see you. Hey, Brittles. Good to have you on. Peter, nice to have you on too. Um, Candice, awesome to see you as well. Hey, it'd be great um, if we could get some interaction going as well. If you've got questions or if something pops into your mind and you want me to address it, um, just comment below and I will address it. I love doing these kinds of things, but I especially love it when I'm not talking to myself. So any interaction is good interaction. And also, if I'm on the right track, I love the feedback. If you guys are getting value, let me know about it. Showed up some hearts. If you feel like you're getting tons of value and other people might um, get the same, then feel free to share. That'd be awesome. Okay, so let's talk about what the three things are that you can do if you if you're... Um, scales are not moving if <laughs> the scales are stuck, um, what that means and what you can do. So the first one is don't let the scales be the only thing that you use to track your progress. Waist measurement is my first tip. Your waist measurement can be such an incredible indicator as to whether your body is actually losing fat. So what most people don't realize is that when they're losing weight, a good third of what is being lost is usually muscle. Now, I'm not saying in every case, but a third is quite a substantial amount. So it suggests that if you have not successfully lost weight and been able to keep it off, then the chances are is, is that what you have lost in the past, a third of has most probably been muscle. So why am I suggesting waist measurement? Well, First of all, it's good to know um, that around your midsection, oh, hey, Marg, hey, Eva, good to have you guys on, hey, Brooke, um, it's good to know that your midsection around your waist, just above um, your kidneys, are two little glands, and they are your adrenal glands, and they are what, me what measure um, how much stress hormone that those little adrenal glands need to make. Now, your if you have a problem with excess body fat um, and you're making a concerted effort to get rid of it, then you should already assume that your body is not dealing with stress hormone very well. Okay, Essentially, if your body's laying down fat stores or if it has laid down fat stores, you not only have a, an excess fat problem, but you also have an excess cortisol or stress hormone problem. So it's a, it's it can be useful to really understand that your body doesn't know the difference between different stresses. It doesn't know the difference between stress from, from work or stress from uh, looking after kids or stress from having to meet a, a deadline or even stress from exercise. It doesn't distinguish the difference between any of them. It just views stress as stress. And so let's say that you have a, a, a bucket all right, you've got a, a stress bucket which has a certain capacity that uh, that it can hold. If your body is making, if your adrenal glands are making so much stress hormone um, that it is filling that bucket up or the bucket starts to overflow, then it means that your whole body's environment is now conducive to want to lay fat stores down. And the place that it will start is around the midsection because it will want to try and protect those adrenal glands. They're very, very important glands. It's going to try and protect all the, the organs that sit around your midsection. And so you want to make sure 
that your adrenal glands are nicely supported and the best way to test whether your body is actually accessing fat is a waist measurement right around those adrenal glands so right around your midsection so make sure that you have a tape measurer and if you are going to take your scale weight then don't only take your scale weight take a waist measurement as well because you'll know that if you are losing fat you'll see it in a waist measurement reduction okay if the environment is high in stress if your body is pumping out excessive amounts of cortisol if your body's environment is more one that wants to lay fat stores down rather than allow your body access to your fat then there's a couple of things that you'll notice one is is that you'll be hungry <laughs> you you will be hungry and if your calorie deficit is too large that'll also contribute to stress it's stressful being hungry and so if the calorie deficit is too large, if you're hungry, um, if stress levels are too high causing hunger, then it's not going to make it easy to, it's not going to make it easy to lose weight. But also the opposite of that is if your appetite hormones have been suppressed and you're not hungry, um, you know, you'll lose muscle. So when the body starts to become what's called catabolic, it starts to eat away at that muscle tissue and neither one of those environments is going to be conducive to fat loss. So just know that if the scale is stuck and you're hungry and or if the scale is stuck and you're not hungry but you're, you're feeling like your legs are getting soft, your body is getting soft then that's also not a good indication that your body is getting access to your fat stores. So these are the kinds of things you want to consider. Try and consider the whole picture. A waist measurement is such an incredible indicator as to whether your body is getting access to your fat because of the fact that it's measuring stress. It's not a it's not a 100% foolproof, but we're pretty freaking close. And so I highly suggest that you use a tape measure as one of the things as one of the tools um, it would be my first choice and then um, and then scales actually not then scales the second would be um, before and after photos but here's another thing that you could look out for check out your body shape all right so um, if you notice that you're heavy around your midsection but your legs are starting to get quite narrow so kind of like that, kind of like that, um, what's that shape? Like an apple body shape where you're heavy around the middle but your legs are starting to narrow down. If you're losing weight but and or have been on the scales but your shape is not improving, um, then that's also not a good indication. So hands up of the, hands up, give me some uh, some likes or some love if, if, you guys are getting value from this if you're understanding you know what I'm putting down I really want you to see that the scale really cannot tell you all of these things the scale cannot really measure what's going on with your body if you are moving towards health or if the weight loss strategy that you have chosen is not towards health and um, the scale cannot tell you that here's the second thing the second thing that you can do is to take a before and after photo. Now, taking photos of your progress along the way, they don't need to be photos that you share with anyone, but I suggest that you take them for you because photos just don't lie. But even more importantly than that, photos will show you how your body shape is changing and if it's changing. So, the other night, we if you caught my Facebook Live, I talked about toxins being stored in your fat, impurities, old hormones, um, old viruses, old bacteria, fluid, waste. It's not just fat. And so when you want to give your body access to your fat stores and that's being re-released into the body, you want to make sure that it's being flushed out really efficiently. So a healthy weight loss should be a process of getting a whole bunch of nutrients in and then also helping your body flush waste out really efficiently and quite often what we do is oversimplify it and just think about eating less and not necessarily consider how the body is moving waste out 
And so for a start, you've got to make sure that all your elimination channels are, are working really efficiently. The two most important ones are obviously your bowel movements and uh, your uh, water intake, so you, you know, if you're urinating. And, um, and so if your bowel movements are, are blocked up or if you're not drinking enough water and not flushing out, then you know, those, that is something that you want to consider. You should see if in your, um, in your photos as you're taking them, if you, in your progression, you should see whether your body shape is changing. So let's say, for example, if impurities are moving out of the body at a good rate, then you should see a decrease of fat in those stubborn and resistant areas. So, you know, some people will say, hey, you know, I've got a real problem with, with fat here. Okay, so my legs and, and my arms are fine, but I just can't get rid of it around my waist. Or, you know, I, I'm fine everywhere, but I just can't seem to get rid of it around my lower abdomen and my butt. You know, it's, it's when you are identifying certain areas that you know are resistant, then if you look at yourself in a photo, as you have progressed, is your body shape changing, improving? Are those areas that were resistant, are they letting up? Are they actually, allow, are you, is your body allowing you access to it? Here's an example. I had a, a wicked problem with cellulite. Honestly, it was just the most annoying. It was like banging my head up against a brick wall for a long, long time. And then I realized that cellulite, for the most part, is not a fat problem. It is a waste problem. It was a real good indication that my body was not able to excrete waste efficiently, and so if you had looked at if you had looked at me clothes on, you would have seen that um, I you know I was about a size ten. Um, you would not have thought that I needed to lose weight, and if I had told you that I wanted to lose weight, you would have thought I was crazy. But I had the worst cellulite on my butt and on my legs, and so as I as I took on my before and after photos or my progression photos, the first thing that I would look for when I would lose weight is what's happening with the cellulite. Because plenty of times before, I had lost weight as in gotten smaller, but the cellulite situation never improved. And what I would notice is, is that as I stopped dieting, it would return. My weight would rebound back. And so before and after photos and watching that progression on your journey and how your body shape is changing, whether your body is giving you access to that stubborn fat area, where the cellulite is improving, will all be far better signs and indications that it is a healthy fat loss than a scale could ever tell you. So you're starting to see how much more value there is in other forms of measurement than in using the scale. Okay, here's a third one. Now, you hear that you should drink a lot of water. Okay, yeah, you, you should. You should drink water and stay hydrated. Um, but hydration, water can help you stay hydrated. It can, but it is not the, the beverage or the, the kind of drink that will hydrate you if you're already hydrated. You need, you need minerals you need um, or electrolytes, right? And so um, if, you're, if you are dehydrated, the tendency is, is that your body will want to hold on to fluid and that can influence the scales. And so you might be doing some things right, but if you're dehydrated and your body wants to hold on to fluid, it can cause a really annoying fluctuation in scale weight. So if you're taking your scale weight regularly, if you're taking it like, you know, every few days, um, which is too frequent, by the way. But if you if you are taking your weight that often, and and your body is dehydrated and you're holding on to fluid, you won't be able. You won't know that that's got nothing to do with your fat stores. You won't know that, but it could be just the thing that demotivates you. And if you don't feel great, especially if you don't feel great about what it is that you are doing, if you if it causes you to feel unmotivated, then chances are is that your actions will follow in the same fashion. So here's a great way to hydrate yourself. And you might be surprised, but it is actually your vegetable intake. It's actually really around your nutrient intake. 
The best way to hydrate yourself or to stay hydrated really is to make sure that your nutrients in what you are eating are really, really high. So minerals, which you predominantly get from vegetables, are what are going to help you get there. It's the, especially green vegetables are full of potassium. And for the most part, you are just not going to be getting enough vegetables. Let's just use this as an example. You should be eating about four to five meals a day. You should be eating about four to five times a day. And at least three of those should be knife and fork meals. Now, in those knife and fork meals, there should be vegetables in three of them. So if we assume that those three out of the four or five meals are breakfast, lunch, and dinner, um, if we assume that that's what they are, then you are you having vegetables in your breakfast meal? Are you having vegetables in your lunch meal? Or are you typically only getting vegetables in your evening meal? And if you intermittent fast as a frequent daily strategy, especially if you are doing a or following a keto diet, how is your vegetable intake? We tend to oversimplify our calories and think, all right, whereabouts is my protein and whereabouts are the carbohydrates, if any, and whereabouts, um, whereabouts are those essential fats? And if you're doing keto, you know, how are my fats? But where can I get in those vegetables is not often a, a, a thought or something that we put focus on throughout those meals in the day. And it can lead to your body not getting enough nutrients to be, a, to be able to actually do its job and help you lose weight. Vegetable smoothies, yeah, Verissa, great idea. So if you're having smoothies in the morning, in the morning, then chucking some greens in there is a great way to get vegetables in in the morning. And a lot of people do choose to use smoothies as that option for that very reason. Um, if you are intermittent fasting, then your eating window should be really, really nutrient rich. So make sure that if you are, you know, eating within a, a three to seven hour window, then what you are eating has got vegetables in every in every sitting. Okay. So I hope you can see that if you are only using the scales as a way to track your progress, it's going to be a really, really frustrating journey for you. I really, I really suggest that if you are going to use the scales, that you take your weight fortnightly, okay, and, and write down in a journal or in a notes app um, what your weight was and the date, and then don't hop on the scales again for another fortnight. And then don't make your decision based on that second weight, but take it again a fortnight afterwards. And what you should be looking for is a trend. If the trend is that you are moving down, then you're going in the right direction. Now, on top of that, and, and with that, you should be taking those other form of measurements. The measurement of whether you are, uh, take, uh, sorry, your waist measurement, taking, uh, before, taking progression photos. Um, and looking at the way your body shape is changing. Now, you can take a waist measurement as frequently as you want. I'd recommend you take a waist measurement once a week. Um, and then the last form of measurement that you could use is your vegetable intake. So those are the three strategies that I highly recommend. If you've got any questions, then shoot them up on the screen right now, um, and I will answer them for you while I'm on here on the live. Um, and uh, what else did I want to say? So next Tuesday, we're going to do um, another Facebook Live. And so if you have questions specifically that would help you along your journey, if you are stuck and you, you don't know how to get forward, how to move yourself forward, then shoot me a private message. Let me know what it is. Or just put it in the comments below and I'll address it next Tuesday night. Okay. All right, guys. Well, um, thanks for joining me tonight. And um, I hope you, for those of us who are in Australia and New Zealand, have had a great public holiday today. And um, I'll see you all on the, um, on the next one, which will be Tuesday next week. Have a fantastic rest of our short week. Okay. Catch you later. No worries, Sylvia. Good to see you on Charlotte. Hey, Christy. Elsa, lovely to see you. And hey, Verissa and Red, very supportive. Oh, you guys are awesome. Hey, I love this space. I love talking about this stuff. 
it was um it started off as an obsession and turned into a much healthier version and um and now I just love to share and really help people get unstuck along the way. So enjoy the rest of your week and I'll see you next time. Bye.